<laughs> um, Hervé, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Thierry, uh, for having uh, the Indo-Pacific as an issue again this year. And I'm just proposing to share a French point of view on the Indo-Pacific. Uh, France has its stance on the Indo-Pacific, and actually it has its stakes. Uh, French overseas territories in the Indo-Pacific, Pacific and Indian Ocean, that's more than, uh, uh, well, if you uh, get it roughly, it's uh, about uh, one and a half million inhabitants, a little more than that, actually. And uh, we boast of the uh, second largest maritime domain in the world, the first one being the US, ten, the, the French one is 10 million square kilometers, the US is 12, actually the Australian one is nine and New Zealand is seven, so I wouldn't say New Zealand boasts as a major strategic power, although it has seven million, but the French, we do actually boast of our 10 million square kilometers in the Indo-Pacific, mostly, at least. Uh, that's 10 million in the world, but most of it is in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, the, the first thing I would stress is that uh, we did not necessarily define the concept of Indo-Pacific exactly the same way that others do. I remember last year having some discussions about this, and uh, as probably most of you know, uh, the uh, Americans mostly have defined the Indo-Pacific in a more northern and uh, uh, eastern way than we've had. Uh, the French would insist, actually, that the Indo-Pacific is the Pacific, but also the Indian Ocean. Actually, if I get it right, American organization, particularly American military organization, uh, takes the word of Indo-Pacific, but actually concentrates mostly on the Pacific and tends not to look very much on the Indian part of it, although it has bases in cooperation with the UK in the Indian Ocean. The second point is that the US look on it is mostly northern, although AUKUS and all this, and since our territories are mostly in the southern hemisphere, the French look on the Indo-Pacific is mostly southern. So there is a difference in concept, not only between France and the US, but between the US and some <laughs> other countries. Uh, France defines itself as a uh, balancing power in the region. We had a short discussion with Jean-Pierre this morning. Uh, uh, the French term is uh, puissance d'équilibre. We're not quite sure that balancing power is a very good translation, and we're not quite sure the concept is exactly the same in French as it would be in English. But the French insist on puissance d'équilibre. We're not actually the only ones in the region, but the translation I propose to share with you is a balancing power. So, well, I think Thierry would agree with you. This is a very nice phrase to have. So, uh, I propose we discuss on, on these two aspects, actually, uh, balancing and power. Uh, France uh, would boast of an Indo being an Indo-Pacific country through its doctrine and its influence. First, uh, the, the doctrine in itself poses a status. Uh, saying we're an Indo-Pacific power, uh, however balancing power, does... Uh, uh, put us in a position of being amongst uh, the major powers. Not quite the size of the US and China, maybe, but a major power. This is important for us. Uh, and uh, obviously, geography and history helps us, defining us as that sort of power. We do understand we're not quite in the same position as the major powers in the region, neither as the small Pacific Islands, for example. Thus, uh, the very convenient definition of a balancing power. Uh, the uh, status is uh, underlined as uh, being uh, a side beyond uh, the uh, antagonism between the US and China. This is French tradition of uh, defining itself as a sort of third term power in many circumstances. But actually here stems a first difficulty in the fact that there are many uh, uh, balancing powers, small powers or medium sized powers in the region. The Pacific Islands would not uh, acknowledge any sort of alignment uh, with China or the US alternatively. Neither would ASEAN countries. Indonesia itself defines itself as a balancing power. What about India? Its size is considerable in the region, its economy not quite yet, but it does not acknowledge, as far as I understand, any alignment with neither with the US nor with China. So when we define our position as being particular as a balancing power, 
it's not that specific as it supposes it is. Actually, the US themselves, uh, being part of many forums and uh, cooperation and dialogue schemes in the region, also play on that. I mean, in some circumstances, they're looking for some sort of alignment between powers, but in other circumstances, understanding the subtlety of the positions of different countries, they play their role in different forums that do not necessarily require any form of alignment. Okay, you do have the Quad, you have AUKUS, but the US also, for example, has organized what is called Partners in the Blue Pacific. And this is a, a cooperation with the, the very many uh, island countries you get in the uh, midst of the Pacific that does not require uh, any necessary alignment. Neither does actually the uh, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, the uh, IPEF, yeah. which uh, in a lower level comes to succeed the uh, TPP retreat in 2017. So, uh, France, in this frame, uh, particularly with the US, is a, a, an ally with many reserves. Uh, and uh, in a way, we pay the price to it. Uh, obviously, we're not in the Quad, which is US, Japan, Australia, and India. Uh, we're not in AUKUS. And as you underlined in your introduction, uh, I mean, AUKUS has to do with the way we lost the contract with Australia on nuclear submarines. Uh, and so, uh, the, the problem is that uh, being a, a balancing power is a positive definition in itself, but it's also a negative definition in the way that it defines itself as participating in many forums that others share, but having decided not to participate in some of the important forums that are aligned to the US. Uh, assertion. Uh, France actually has uh, enhanced uh, the assertion of Indo-Pacific as such, for example, uh, we have uh, been very much the uh, driving force with the definition of a trade policy for European Union in the Indo-Pacific. And for example, we've simulated Europe's engagement in uh, 2022 with a ministerial forum <coughs> between Indo-Pacific countries and uh, uh, members of government from the European Union. Our assertion is not only about uh, overall discussions and forums, it is an actual military presence although we tend very often to present as military presence and military cooperation what is very often humanitarian presence and humanitarian uh, cooperation, military means being used for humanitarian missions, which is fair and useful, but you should not confuse both terms. Uh, we purport to have reality on the ground and at sea France as an Indo-Pacific country through its presence and connections. The presence, as I was saying, several territories in the Indian Ocean and uh, in the uh, Pacific and more than uh, one and a half million inhabitants. Uh, but one must remember that most of the connection from these territories, be it French Polynesia or Mayotte between Madagascar and Africa, most of the connections are with mainland France, and obviously there is a deficit so far on regional connections. We may have no choice in the future, actually. We remember the slides that were shown yesterday by uh, the uh, chairperson from the uh, BCG, uh, presenting what everybody knows as the regionalization of globalization. And, and this, for example, weakens the maritime routes on which we are very dependent. Uh, all the trade that's organized between Europe and the uh, French territories in the Pacific depends on maritime routes, routes that are extremely fragile today because they are reorganized, understanding the evolution of globalization. So we have a concern, uh, a direct strategic concern shared with our allies on the security of these routes, as everybody understands in the Pacific. But we have uh, a more direct interest in the fact that they obviously are changing today and this should stimulate us in turning to new opportunities in the region. There's a gap to bridge on our regard and connections on shared interests. There are political connections with all the forums we're a member of. Uh, uh, and uh, some, I mean, the many I could say are the South Pacific Community, the Pacific Commission, the Pacific Island Forum, the Indian Ocean Commission. But there, is, there are some difficulties, for example, in articulating roles and positions, the fact that uh, our local governments in all these regions and territories are frequently members of these 
different groupings, and sometimes they yield real power, influence, and, uh, for example, uh, trade responsibility concerning the Pacific French territories is not the responsibility for national government, but responsibility for local government. And so, these local governments actually have economic responsibility, although today they mostly understand their Pacific role or Indo-Pacific role as a political one, obviously underplaying their role in the economy. We need build up more economic connections. Economies, as I was saying, are very much linked to middle <coughs> class today, but there are some realities. For example, uh, I will let, be concluding. Let, let me cut you short. Yeah, sure. Uh, some realities, for example, in oil supply to these territories, coming from Singapore, for example, concerning Réunion, tourism as well, which is very strong from Australia or Japan in New Caledonia or from the West Coast in the US to French Polynesia. We didn't play or did not succeed in a role to be regional hubs, which usually other territories have better succeeded than we did. This is history, but France is taking a very prominent role in renewable energies, for example. Many companies uh, in renewable energies in Australia are French companies, Noé and Accur, for example. But they develop in the region not from our territories, but they develop from Australian bases. And so, obviously, we have to uh, reconcile tomorrow what is the political assertion we're on today and the economic developments uh, we may succeed in the future. Yeah, I've That's given it. you far more than seven minutes, so thank you very much. You've flown the flag for France yeah. extremely <laughs> well. Thanks.